Good morning everyone. My name is Audrey. I am Stitchy Witch 42 here on FlossTube and over on Instagram. Today is the 8th day of January 2024. It's been a month. It's been just about a full month since I did my last video. I had a second abdominal surgery in December that uh, was not expected. And so I've just been trying to heal. <laughs> Two abdominal surgeries, two months apart, October and December, uh, it's a bit hard. But I feel better. I just have to get used to my abdominal muscles hurting for a while more, and then I get to move on and release all this health issues in the past, in the past. And that's my word for 2024 is release. I'm going to release the things that no longer need me. Does not mean I'm releasing any more body parts. I'm just just saying. Just saying. So I don't have a lot of stitching to share um, today. There hasn't been a lot of stitching in this past month. There's been some. It's been minimal. But I have other things that I would like to share with you. And so I'm going to talk. Yeah, I'm going to talk. Okay, first of all, um, I wanted to let you know that I finally remembered that I had done a giveaway back in November, I think it was. I was giving away the pattern for the Halloween balcony. And I finally drew a name on that because I was looking through my notes and realized I hadn't done that yet. I drew Linda's name. She is Lady Legionnaire. I've already contacted her and gotten that mailed off to her. I hope you get it soon, Linda, and I hope you have as much fun stitching it as I did. Mine is still at the framers. I am waiting to get it back. I know it's going to be gorgeous, and I can't wait to share that. And since I'm not doing stitching, I don't really have a lot of stitching to share. I'm not going to do a whip parade because I don't have that many. But I thought I'd share with you some of my stats for 2023. I was going through my stitching journal. This is the journal that I have used for approximately the last three years and I purchased it from Chris Yeo as the Yeo Flies. And the thing I like about her journals is that the pages are removable. So what I have done for each of the last three years is I've just bought new pages, taken the old ones out, bundled them together, and kept them upstairs. This one is being retired this year, and I'm going to put all my pages in it so that I have everything together in this journal. And this is my new one. I love it. Steampunk. Had to try that. But I was going through the old journal and I was counting some things up, as I like to do because I'm a bookkeeper. When I started 2023, I had eight projects. I abandoned one. I had 33 new starts, 32 finishes. FFO'd 24 of those 32 finishes. And going into this year, I have eight projects. I don't know how that happened, but it works for me. So, talking of abandoned projects, yesterday I got to go to the Mountain Stitchers meetup up in Sandy, Oregon. And I tell you, I had to take back roads to get it. Well, not necessarily back roads. It was a highway, but it was a back route to get from Silverton to Sandy, Oregon. It took about an hour's drive but it was gorgeous. Wooded driveway, or wooded route driving up there. And one of the things that they were doing yesterday is they were doing a whip white elephant. And I thought, that's great. I can take that piece that I've abandoned because I know I still have it upstairs. And I couldn't find it. I looked everywhere that I thought I could. And because the project 
was from one of my Just Cross Stitch magazines. I know I wouldn't have tossed it because I have to have my magazines. But for the life of me, I could not find it anywhere. So I think the gremlins in my house, and there are gremlins in this house, they hide things. And then when I don't need to find it anymore, I will randomly come across it and it'll be in an obvious spot. And I'm going, why? 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 But they never tell me. So I didn't have a project to take with me to the Mountain Stitchers to pass along in the White Elephant. Fortunately, a couple of the other ladies that were there decided that they would bring extras and everyone who was there did get to participate. So, if you've never done a white elephant before, one person starts, they go pick up the gift, they open it up, they take it back to their seat. The second person can go pick up another one or they can steal from the last person and so on and so forth. And it goes around and things could be stolen three times and then it was frozen. The first project that I got was a cute little project. Had a, It was a Mill Hill kit with a gnome and a rabbit on it. And the lady who had passed it on had also stuck a baggie of her homemade cheddar biscuits in there. I didn't even get to try one of those before it was stolen away from me. So when I went up to get my second package, Cheryl, sisterlies, goes, take the big bag, take the big bag. And I thought, what the heck, take the big bag. It was from her. That girl had taped the top of the bag shut. I had to get my little, my handy dandy Swiss Army knife. I mean, I'm dangerous with this, my Swiss Army knife. And cut open the tape. And then she filled the bag with tissue paper, so I'm just flinging it. And what was inside of it was this project bag. Inside of this project bag is another project bag, a booklet. This is Halloween book 2022 from Twin Peak Primitives. All the flosses. And now, remember, this is a whip exchange. So this is what I'm doing. I'm looking at the fabric and I'm opening it up and I'm looking at both sides and I'm opening it further and I'm looking at both sides and I'm opening it further and I'm looking at both sides. There's no stitching. <coughs> the only thing she did was cut a piece out to use for another project. So I have this nice, lovely piece. It's a Lugana. Nice. I will definitely be using that. So sitting next to me on my left side was Julie. Um, and we worked out a plan because she knows how much I like Halloween. So she goes, here's the plan. If somebody steals this from you, and she goes, my turn is next, and I'll go steal it from them, and then bring it back to me, and you and I will swap so that she was making sure that I was going to end up with a Halloween bag. And then she told everybody, so nobody, nobody stole it from me. And I'm really thankful for that because I'll have some fun stitching some of these lovely little projects or something else on that Lugana because it's gorgeous. All right, I have a finish. This was actually finished in 2023. It's the Brooks Books Freebie Merry Christmas, Mr. Grinch. And I stitched mine on Ada. So we have, make sure I've got the right side here because I was going to show you the back side. We've got Mean Grinch with his heart 
three sizes too small. We have Good Grinch with the bigger heart. And we have Max. I was going to try to get these fully finished before the end of the year, but apparently Lady Dot White Chenille is really difficult to find in December. I've checked twice with Acorns and they don't have it. It's on order and Janine knows I need it, so she's going to hold some for me when it comes in. Those are my last three finishes of 2023. I have Christmas projects. Me. I have Christmas projects. I did not participate in the Jingle Ball, but a couple of my friends did, and the one pattern that I saw that I wanted, I asked if somebody would pick it up for me. So they got me a copy of just the pattern for Teresa Kogut's Santa's Delivery. And I am working on the center Santa right now. I know that when this was put out, there was the option of getting the kit, um, which comes with the wooden stands for them and the black perforated paper. I wasn't going to hunt for the black perforated paper, so I went ahead and just got green perforated paper. And that is as far as I've gotten on the first one. Right now, I'm referring to him as Nearly Headless Nick. If you get that, you get that. <laughs> if you don't, Harry Potter. But that's as far as I've gotten with my very first Santa. Obviously, I don't have the stands. I have a husband who would be able to make me something like that. But I have a different idea for finishing these. And I don't want to show that just yet because I want to make sure that I can do it before I pass along the idea. I am keeping it in my um, Bags Plus Floss Buddy. This was a pattern that I stitched a few years back, Yoda, do or do not, there is no try. And I sent it to her when she was still over in England and she made it into a Floss Buddy. So there are the colors that I am using for this Santa. And as I always do, I'm doing all the DMCs. The majority of the colors are DMC. There's three specialty colors, but I just went with the DMC because it's the way I do things. And then my other project, I know I shared the pattern with you on my last video. I don't think I had started it. It's from the Stitcher Hood. It's Scrooge and Marley. And that's as far as I have gotten with it. Um, I stopped about there on the top border because I wanted to get the letters done to make sure I got the right corner done. <coughs> Sorry, I've got the scratchy throat this morning and apparently I don't want me to talk. So, that's as far as I've gotten on Scrooge and Marley. I am stitching this on a 28 count vintage country mocha and I'm using DMC 3787. It's that greeny gray color. And then I have one more new start. Again, I don't know whether I've shared this with you or not. Okay, good. I had bought, because Anna showed it, and I immediately had to have it, this is the Tiny Modernist Bell Moon Phase Bell Pole. Read the words. I know I shared this with you because I got a 
long strip of black Ada in my bag at Acorns and Threads and I couldn't figure out what it was for. It was for this. It's only four colors, all DMC. And that is where I am at with that. It's funny because I was looking at this and I was wondering how the black was going to show up on the black Ada. And it's not quite black, black Ada. It shows up really nicely. And I really, really like this. But all those, the other three colors are white, O2, and O3, which are very, very pale, silvery white colors. Anyway, it's gorgeous, and I cannot wait to see what this looks like when I get more done on it. I need to pause for a moment, because I have to go get a pattern. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. Did you miss me? So, again, Anna was showing a pattern a while back on one of her videos that as soon as she showed it, I had to stop. I had to go back. I think I had to rewatch that segment like two or three times before I finally figured out what the name of the pattern was, even though she clearly said it. But, you know, it's one of those things. And when I show you this, you will understand why I have to stitch this. Besides the fact that I just think it is gorgeous. It is Live Long and Prosper in Vulcan. Look at that. Look at that. It is so stinking cool. It is from Perfect is the Enemy. I think is is the designer but when you get this pattern it gives you the vertical version it gives you a horizontal version on one page and no. so you can either do it as a long bell pull or you could do it more as a square I am doing the long vertical because I think that I have to do that. I already know that I want to use my Silks For You, that cobalt blue skein that I have, because I got a lot of it. I got a lot of it, and I need to use it up. And when I was at Acorns, um, I found a 32 count Whisper. It's a beautiful, beautiful gray. There was another piece of linen up there that had more mottled color in it, which was my first choice. But I went and grabbed DMC 796 because that's really close to what the Silks For You blue is. And I took it up to the two ladies behind the counter and I held that blue in front of that piece of linen and this gray. And I said, which one? And in unison, they said gray. Go with what the ladies say. So I put the other one back. I, I didn't need to buy the other piece, so I didn't. It's okay. I have a lot of stash I need to go through. So, what I've done in the past month is not a lot of stitching. I have been up to three different meetups this past week. I got invited to go to my friend Margaret's house on New Year's Day and there were several of us there from Acorns and Threads. <coughs> Again with the, the throat. The fourth was first Thursday and I went up to that and then yesterday I got to go up to the Mountain Stitchers 
that was my first time going up there and like I said I had a lovely drive there and back but still recovering from my last surgery I don't have a lot of energy right now I got to spend some time this morning FaceTiming with Helen D and after talking with her I think I'm gonna go curl up in my chair with my Alphonse MOOC that I have not worked on in months besides the fact that it's been staring at me from across the living room I think I'm gonna just curl up in my chair and do some stitching on her because she needs it and so do I one of the things that I had mentioned back three or four videos ago that I might be stitching more bats in 2023 and I thought I would challenge myself this is gonna be a stretch for me but I came up with the hashtag 24 bats in 2024 oh my gosh and I am going to try to find 24 smalls bat projects I kind of sort of pulled out some of my Halloween cross stitch magazines and was looking through them trying to find patterns that either mostly had bats in them or had bats in them I have a Mill Hill kit I've ordered the Satsuma one I think I've ordered another one from oh I can't remember the name of the designer I know it was stitched a couple of times last year by other people but I'm going to try to stitch 24 small bat projects this year it's the 8th and I haven't started so I'm doing good <laughs> but I figure if I use that hashtag maybe somebody will want to play the game with me there is no start along well that's what it would be it would be a start along whenever you want to if you stitch any small bat projects tag me on Instagram use the hashtag hashtag 24 bats in 2024 and I'm gonna do this through December 31st come next January I'm gonna see if anybody has managed to get 24 bats done in 2024 using that hashtag and tagging me in their posts and if anybody has I'll put them into a drawing for a gift card from acorns and threads for twenty four dollars so I'm still working on finding my patterns and I have a mill hill upstairs that I might get started on soon but it's an idea and I'm gonna see if I can do it I've written it in my journal so we're gonna see how that works anyway oh 110 days now until I retire my official retirement date will be April 27th two days before my birthday because yeah I'm doing that and my actual last day working will be the 24th so I am counting down once I'm retired I might have more time to stitch the bats <sighs> yeah bats in 2024 so I think I have shared with you everything that I could think of sharing with you I'm going to try to get back into my regular every other week update because I'm not planning on any more surgeries I'm done with those and I'm going to release all of that into the past and move forward positively and know that this is going to be a better year so until we meet up again my friends live long and stitch on bye bye